my friendos. I realized recently that I accidentally have posted several vlogs back to back, which I know people are enjoying and watching the vlogs, so thank you very much. But I did want to go ahead and post a video that's just a wrap up so you don't have me giving you rambly updates every five seconds. My best friend Bonnie just did a video where she talked about all the books she read in the spring and I figured mimicry is the best form of flattery. So I'm gonna steal her idea. She does the video where she just lists the books she read with the star ratings she gave them. I want to go a little bit more deeper, a little bit more deeper. I love being an English major. I'm gonna talk about each book a little bit just so you can get a fleshed out experience of what each book is about. But this might end up being a pretty lengthy video to combat that and maybe throw it back on my channel. I decided I'm gonna do this video as I'm knitting. So I'm currently working on this Gryffindor scarf. Am I a Gryffindor? No. Do I have friends who are Gryffindors? No. It's the only colors I had. Also my one friend who's a Gryffindor is currently commenting on this video like, hmm. So starting off my spring wrap up, I want to begin in March. So the first book that I read in March was The Diviners by Liva Bray. I think the entire series is worth picking up so I'm just gonna give it a good series review right now. So this series is about a main character, Evie. I mean, Evie is the primary main character, but there are several characters that this book follows. It's set in New York City in the 1920s, and it's all about these teenagers who have powers, and they have to stop all of these nefarious forces and spirits that descend over New York City. In each of the books, it's kind of a different entity that they have to fight against. Each character has their own little side plots of things that they're trying to get accomplished while they're in the city. These books are so good. I've said consistently in my vlogs that they genuinely read like The Great Gatsby meets BuzzFeed Unsolved. The characters are so memorable and so great. The relationships in this book are also awesome. The cast is so diverse. Each of the books is really long. I would say they're like 500 or 600 pages each, but they are such a good investment. The audiobooks are spectacular and if you haven't started reading audiobooks yet, what are you doing? You need to go pick up The Diviners. They read like a movie. The characters are so fun and the plots are great. I can't wait for book four to come out and I'm gonna devour it. I think I gave all of them four or five stars. Also in March I reread Ignite Me in preparation to read Restore Me. I feel like I'd be beating a dead horse if I talk about those but I'm gonna talk about them. So I reread Ignite Me. It's my favorite book in the series. Even after Restore Me came out it's still my favorite book in the series. You cannot top chapter 58 of Ignite Me. I dare you to try. And then Restore Me. I gave it five stars but but I'm not here to say it was a flawless, perfect continuation. Every waking thought of mine is reread Restore Me. I'm so obsessed with it. I loved it. But there are parts of it that I think are just a little you can kind of tell it's an afterthought. And that doesn't mean that it's unrealistic or I can't follow the action of it, but you can just tell it's a bridge book to the next one because there's little to no plot throughout the entire thing. It's very internal, which I love because I'm here to learn more about them. I could just keep talking and talking and talking about this, but I loved all the new characters. I loved the ending of the book and we get to see all the new stuff introduced in the next book. There's so many little aspects of it that I think could have been done better with representation. Like a lot of different languages in the book are done incorrectly. There's a new character who I hate and she's problematic. And I just wanted more of what the original trilogy was instead of such an abrupt pivot to like, okay, we're doing this now. Which is fine because obviously like I'll do whatever the characters want. It's more content. Even though it was a game changer, it, like nothing really happened other than plot twists. <laughs> I still gave Restore Me five stars, which in actuality it's more of like a four or three star book, but I'm just like so consumed by how good the good parts were and the character growth and the anxiety rep that I'm like, gotta give it all the stars, gotta give her what she deserves. The next book I read was One More Thing, Stories and Other Stories by BJ Novak, who is an actor from The Office, among other things. It's just satirical and witty short stories. And I thought it was all right. I listened to it on audio, but that was just confusing because I think the satiricalness of it was lost if you listen to it rather than read it. But whenever I read it, I got bored. So I ended up just skipping around to stories that I thought were interesting and that was fine. I gave the book three and a half stars. The stories that I liked, I did think 
had good messages and were written well, so I can't be too mad at it. Another series I picked up I'm gonna mention all together is the Bargainer series by Lauren Thalassa. This series is a new adult paranormal, I guess you would call it. It's about a siren who lives in the human world. One day this guy named the Bargainer, who's a fae, helps her out with a sticky situation and so she owes him a debt and she ends up accruing so many debts with him. He disappears from her life for seven years and comes back and is like, hey, time to fulfill those IOUs. I need your help with some stuff that's going down in the fairy world. So he whisks her away to his knight court as it's very elegantly coined. And it's about them working together on some stuff and then their subsequent relationship. I call this book the Walmart brand of Akamap because as you can tell, it's basically the same thing. The way that this is written is very much in the new adult style of like, oh my God, his abs were so good, sweet baby Jesus. Like that sarcasm that I am not a fan of, especially in dark fantasy in a world where women are being raped in their sleep and these demon children are taking over the world like it was such a weird writing style to have for a very dark world however I do think the relationship was healthy I liked the two characters even if there were cheesy moments between them the main downfall of this book is just that I wish a good editor would take a crack at it have the author flesh out the world and flesh out the story and get rid of the cheesy writing style and just dive into descriptions. Make the characters who are already interesting just pop off the page. I think it's worth the read if you're interested in it and if you want something with Faye that has good romance. It's not something that wowed me. Next I finished another new adult series called the Off the Map series by Leah Riley. Can a woman knit in peace? This is a romance series that's set in Australia, and this is actually a continuous series and not a series with spin-off novels, which is something I'm so thankful for. So this entire series follows two characters named Talia and Bran. It's all about Talia, who goes from LA to Australia to study abroad, and then the rest of the books just follow them, having fun, doing stuff. I think this is a really cute series, but I'm also gonna say if you're Australian, you probably wouldn't like it. I think this book was written by an American so it probably idealizes a lot of Australian guys and romanticizes like accents and stuff like that. As far as the romance in this series it's one of the best ones I've ever read. It was healthy and refreshing. It wasn't cliche at all and it wasn't sex scenes that I thought were gross either so it was a really good balance between being steamy but not like hyperbolic <laughs> and disgusting. The main downfall of this series and the reason why I would always rate them four stars instead of five is because the writing style is so corny. The characters are constantly making jokes to each other in dialogue. Even in scenes where they were literally dying, they would still try and joke around with each other. And although it was cute sometimes, more often than not, I was just like, stop. Either way, they were still such enjoyable reads that I gave four stars to. Would recommend if you're American. The next book I read was Of Fire and Stars by Audrey Coulthurst. This is a femme slash romance book. One of them is a princess that has been sent off to marry a prince and the other is that prince's sister. A great story about how these two young women find each other. The relationship slowly progresses. There's a little bit of a magic system to the world so it's also about this character discovering her magic. I think it was very cute and fun. I listened to it on audiobook and it was just such an engaging quick read. Nothing about it was extremely impressive to me. It's one of the first fem slash books I've read so I was loving the softness of that relationship. I know there's gonna be a sequel to this that comes out the same day that the next Shattering book comes out, but I would be interested in picking that up because I would like to see the character who has magical abilities discover those abilities more and use them and craft them. Once that happens, the world might be more intriguing rather than just being this generic kingdom setting. But I really enjoyed it and I gave it four stars and I think it's just a quick, fun, light read. And it's especially important because it's so rare to have a fantasy book with a lesbian relationship in it. The next book I read was called Vox by Nicholson Baker. This is a book that is told entirely through dialogue between two people who are talking on a phone sex hotline. It's not in my comfort zone to pick up and I ended up actually really enjoying it. So it was actually a lot of deep discussion that there's a lot to unpack from about two people with normal lives that are trying to have company on a Friday night or whatever it was. And I really liked hearing the story of these people's lives and how they ended up where they were. So I gave that book four 
four stars. The next book I read was A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Maas. <laughs> I don't know why I pre-ordered this. If it was for the pen or whatever they were giving out, I still haven't gotten that, so lies. And it's supposed to be a bridge book between this series and the following series that's gonna be about a new character. But here's my problem with that. Um, that whole sentence and the way they pitched that is a lie. Because this whole book just reads like an epilogue and they could have charged like three dollars for it. The way that this is written is complete fan fiction and fan fulfillment. And I know the same can be said about Restore Me being just an addition to the series and it's not anything necessary, but this book really had no stakes. It was just like a Christmas morning and everyone was shopping for each other and everyone was drinking every other chapter and there was no actual plot purpose to this book. And the character that this next series is about wasn't even in the book. So you can't sit here and argue that it was a bridge book if they're not there. It's not. It's just more porn. <laughs> I did a whole Goodreads rant on it and I say check that out. It just w isn't worth the money. I think it was kind of a scam. It feels like the story should just be done. Like Reese isn't interesting anymore. Feyre just sits around in the house and does nothing. She doesn't even lead as the high lady of the court. That's all I'm gonna say. Where'd my string go? Next I read a new adult book called Last Will and Testament. What am I doing? By Dahlia Adler. The main character's name is Lizzie and at the beginning of the book both of her parents die tragically and so she's having to balance taking care of her two younger brothers with attending college and the book delves into her relationship with the TA of one of her classes who's trying to help her and they end up being more than just student and teacher so it's one of those books. I basically just read romance books now to see like was it healthy? Yeah good. Three stars. Bye. It did what I was expecting of it and I wasn't disappointed by the romance at all. I love the male main character and the plot was easy to follow and good and the writing was fine. My issue with it is the main character. I just could never see eye to eye with her. I just didn't understand why she did the things she did and that was frustrating for me but otherwise nothing really sticks in my head as something that I did didn't enjoy about this book so if you're looking for a good romance and you can deal with the main character who's kind of irrational and mean to people for no reason <laughs> you should try it because it's a good little story it's worth it next I read another romance book it's summertime now so I'm getting a lot into romance and I read The Hating Game by Sally Thorne which is a new favorite book of all time and a definite favorite book of this year this book is an office romance about two co-workers who hate each other but they you know it's a romance book, so they stop hating each other eventually. <laughs> the way that this book's plot is written was just so slow burning, but it was never boring. It just had the perfect angsty situations between the two characters that made it addicting to read. I did have a lot of small issues with it, like the main character trying to make a lot of her jokes will say some distasteful things sometimes and use words and things that we shouldn't be saying ideally. Also, the love interest could sometimes get a little protective and do creepy things like when she's on the phone with another guy he takes it and hangs up but the grand scheme of the relationship is so soft and cute that I just can't help but give it the credit it deserves as a great romance story so I gave this book four and a half stars and I would highly recommend it. The final book I'm going to talk about is A Very Large Expanse of Sea by Tahana Mafi. It is her own voices contemporary novel about a girl named Sherine who is a Persian American young girl in high school who moves around a lot. The book is set post 9-11 so it really delves into all the prejudice that society has against her and all the different stereotypes that she has to combat with wearing a headscarf. I already want to reread it and it's not even out yet. Like we don't have a cover for it yet. I read it in one sitting which I have not done since high school. I feel like I just need to revisit it and have it soak in and just bask in its glory because it was so good. The message of this book and the tone of Shireen's anger to her life in her high school and her town is so well done. It's very different than Furthermore and Shatter Me which have very flowery writing styles but this one just slams into your spine and gets the message there. Shireen ends up having a little side romance with a boy in her class named Ocean who's a white privileged upper class kid who lives a completely opposite life from her so it explores the privilege and class and xenophobia 
phobia and it unpacks so much within a short amount of time. The issues I had with it are something I'd have to discuss in a spoilery review because they're all like minor things about the plot that I think could have been smoothed out better. But one other thing that I will say I wasn't a huge fan of is that this book for the first maybe 25% takes on a tone of explaining things rather than showing things. So the exposition of the book is very driven by this is my life, this is what it's like, this is what happens to me rather than just delving into her life and her story. It's just not a preference of mine and contemporary. I just messed up my knitting pattern and I'm almost done talking anyway so I'm gonna thrust this aside and deal with it later. For the message of the book I think that my issues with it are completely secondary to what the point she was trying to get across is. I still highly 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 recommend this book. Please pre-order it. This book deserves to be a number one New York Times bestseller but I gave Avlios four stars. The rest of the books I read in June and I will be talking about all the books that I read during the summer and a summer wrap up whenever I finish my internship. Stay tuned to my vlogs to get more in-depth information of how I liked things. Okay my mom wants me to go watch America's Funniest Home videos with her now so I'm gonna do that. Let me know what you've been reading recently and if you like it especially like romances for the summertime I'm into it. Hope you all have a wonderful life. Goodbye!